I sit at my cubicle all day in front of a computer. We don't deal with the public, so at least I don't have to show up to work in a suit and tie. <laughs> I'm a state employee in the Employment Development Department. The, the formal name, the em Employment Development Department, EDD. EDD, every day is different. <laughs> Bullshit. Every day is the same. But on occasion, the big boss goes on the PA system and announces so-and-so is retiring, then plays the song Celebration by Cool and the Gang. <laughs> Everyone stops what they're doing, stands and applauds while so-and-so walks out the door for the last time. Being one of the youngest in my office, I'm usually clapping the slowest and shaking my head like, you lucky motherfucker. <laughs> Can I retire now too? Days when that happens, I sit back down, but I don't immediately go back to work. I give Patty, my cubicle mate, the look, and we stare at charts and figures and calculate how many more years we have to sit here before we get a standing ovation and retire too. It always ends in a sigh. Shit, let's just play the lotto. The next best thing to do aside from daydreaming about retirement is daydreaming about vacation. Patty is well-traveled and isn't bothered when I come back with pictures and stories. She does the same. It's a healthy distraction from being a paper pusher desk drone. At that time, I came back from vacation and was still daydreaming about my trip. I went home to the Philippines. I took a round trip flight from San Diego to Manila with an hour and a half layover in Tokyo. The plane was a Boeing 787 with extra leg room, LCD touch screens in the back of the headrest where I could choose my own in-flight movies, automatic tinting windows, complimentary headphones, blanket and pillow, and a meal every, uh, every three hours or so. I felt like a long way from the original plane trip to America, although I barely remember it. All I remember really was the continuous blaring sound of the plane engines, the windowless bare walls with wires showing and a stale metallic smell. We sat facing the rear of the plane. It was a beast. That plane I rode back then at age three when I first came to America was a Lockheed C-5 Galaxy, a military plane. It was a MAC flight, which stands for Mir Military Airlift Command. My pops enlisted in the Navy when I was born and three years later was able to petition for my mom, older sister, and me to immigrate to the USA. We were chasing the American dream. Then, at 31 years old, I was way overdue for a visit to the Philippines. When I arrived, I was introduced to my cousins who thought I'd be a snobby American, but we got acquainted by a universal pastime, alcohol, baby. <laughs> One night, my cousin asked, how much is it for a pack of cigarettes in the US? I told him, eight to ten dollars in California. Wow, here a pack of cigarettes is only a hundred pesos. That's like 250. Then he asked, how much is it? How much is it for a beer? I told him five to eight dollars depending where you go. Here it's only 80 pesos. That's only a dollar eighty. Here in the Philippines, the vices are cheap. Even if you have no job, you can still smoke and drink. <laughs> My cousins got me to eat all these exotic foods, um, barbecued chicken intestine, duck fetus, goat brain, pig blood, uh, one day old chick, and dog meat. Um, what? I promise if I read the actual name of the dish, it would sound more appetizing. 
They made me sing Ilocano songs on karaoke. I had to match them beer for beer and shot for shot. My Ilocano sucked, so my family let me speak in English. All of them thought I was rich, but if you have 54 Ameri uh, Philippine pesos for every American dollar, you feel kind of rich. So I paid their way to vacation in Boracay, in an island resort. A package deal round trip from Manila to Boracay for three days, two nights hotel was less than the cost of a night in Vegas. So we rode sailboats and ATVs, got massages, and sat on the white sand under coconut trees drinking San Miguel beer. I got badly sunburned, but I felt alive. I was able to convince them I, I wasn't snobby, but still an American, I guess. So I revisit my roots. The Igorot Filipino is the indigenous people in the mountain regions, and I have Igorot blood in me. They retain their culture while many of the lowland Filipinos were heavily influenced by the Spanish when they colonized. In World War II, the, the Japanese were out in the boondocks, so butchering of the Tagalog word bundok for mountain. Some Japanese soldiers raped the Igorot women. When the Americans came, they didn't. They were in interested in the indigenous people and wanted to know more about them and were peaceful. Igorots developed a love for folk music and Levi's jeans because of that. Uh, the Americans helped build roads and established cities in the mountain regions. One such city is my hometown, Baguio City, in the province of Benguet. Because of the high elevation, it's known as summer capital. Everyone goes there for the cool climate to escape the summer season heat in the lowlands. My uncles and I toured the city and we looked at plots of land for sale. My uncle said, you can buy a plot, then we build a house for you. Once it's built, rent it out. It will be steady income. When you retire, you come back, you live here. On my last morning there, I sat with my Lola a while on her porch and talked with her. She's shorter than I remember, standing less than five foot. I, bet I bent down as she took my arm. She pointed out to the mountains and mentioned that most of the trees are gone, replaced by houses. The mountains in view used to be covered with pine trees and there would be blooms of sunflowers around this time. The landscape changed through the years. She asked if I remembered. I said no. A generation and a language gap sat between us. I only know her from the st stories my mom told me growing up. She barely knows about me. I start to regret not writing her more often. You work? Yes, one Lola. Good. You are tall now. You were once baby. You are strong, always strong, always climbing, climbing. Always run and play, always laughing, laughing. Not married? No children? Uh, no, Haan Lola. You choose your wife now. <laughs> I smile and I say, okay. I laugh it off at first. She was married early. At, at 50, she had 10 children, and I was her fourth grandchild. At our meeting, again, she was 80 and frail, but she had many children to care for her and many more grandchildren, even great-grandchildren. My Lola didn't have a retirement plan. She just had a lot of kids. <laughs> I realized she just wanted what was best for me, the same way my parents did when they used to nag me about choosing a good major or choosing the right job. She still lived in the house my Lolo built, the same one my mom grew up in, the same one I spent my first years of life.
from all the things I've forgotten about this place. For some odd reason, it still smells the same as I remember when I left at three years old. Before I knew it, I was on a bus ride to Manila and on a plane ride back to America. In the Philippines, the term to call people who leave and return is balik bayan, or returnees. You have to leave to come back. Back at work, I push some paper around and I'm daydreaming. Patty and I look up private islands for sale on the internet. <laughs> we look up how much the lottery is up to. California's unemployment rate at the time, 8.1%, third highest in the nation. There are 3.5 million people in California without jobs. I don't know what the statistics are in the rest of the US, but many companies are outsourcing their work to cheaper labor in other countries like the Philippines. Patty reminds me at 55, as long as we have at least 20 years of state service, we could retire if we want to. Uh, 55, why not 45? I tell Patty, I got a full body massage for an hour in Boracay for 500 pesos. She looked up the exchange rate and saw it's about 11 bucks. Patty gives me the look and then immediately starts looking up property in Boracay. <laughs> I scratched my sunburnt legs through my jeans. I was gone on vacation for about a month. My coworkers come by and almost don't recognize me. They compliment my tan. But I always look tan. Do you mean my sunburn? <laughs> Come on, how was the Philippines? I've never seen so many Filipinos in my life. <laughs> no, really, how was it? I channel my Igorot Filipino heritage and I tell them very proudly, I ate dog meat and I saw them butcher a goat. Uh, how nice. I laugh to myself and sit in front of my computer and act like I'm working. I think to myself, I'm doing okay. But then I contemplate the possibility of retiring in the Philippines and I daydream. The American dream is just that, 